Rolls-Royce is a brand known for its expert craftsmanship and bespoke luxury vehicles. When you hear the name, you probably imagine expensive cars being driven by the elite, right? Well, it might surprise you then to learn that one of the company's founders grew up in abject poverty, and it was only through a chance encounter more than 100 years ago that the company was able to flourish into the renowned business it is today. By the end of this video, hopefully, you'll be able to see Rolls-Royce in an entirely different light and be impressed by more than wow. just their fancy cars. This is the inspiring rags to riches story behind the formation of one of the world's finest luxury brands, Rolls-Royce. With a shared ambition to make the future of motoring extraordinary, the Honorable Charles Rolls and Sir Henry Royce joined forces in 1904. Despite being from very different backgrounds, the founders of Rolls-Royce Motor Cars formed an unlikely partnership, one forged with a shared passion for engineering and a desire to create the best car in the world. Our story begins long before 1904, as far back as 1863 in fact, when Henry Royce was born in Peterborough, England, the youngest of four siblings in an impoverished household. Life became a struggle for Royce when at the age of nine, his father passed away. The young boy and his family were left with almost nothing. Out of necessity, Royce began working as a telegram boy selling newspapers until the age of 14 when one of the boy's aunts sponsored him to begin an apprenticeship with the Great Northern Railway. This was the spark that ignited a long life interest in engineering for Royce. Having never finished his standard education, he took every chance to improve himself during this time by learning algebra and studying French in the evenings while honing his skills as an electrical engineer. Once his three-year apprenticeship was complete, Royce spent some time as a toolmaker earning one penny an hour before his hard work paid off and he was able to land a job at the Electric Light and Power Company. After four years of steady employment, having gathered some valuable real-world experience and rising to become chief electrical engineer, Roy still wasn't satisfied. He had saved up 20 pounds and dreamed of running his own company. So, at the age of 21, he did just that, creating F.H. Royce & Company in 1884 with his friend and colleague Ernest Claremont. The company was well known for its innovation as well as for improving electrical appliances that already existed, like doorbells and dynamos. Fifteen years after he started the company, Royce had turned his initial 20-pound investment into 30,000 pounds, which would be around 7 million pounds or 8 million US dollars in today's money. Unfortunately for Royce, in 1889, a recession hit, staring bankruptcy in the face. Royce refused to lower his standards and once famously said, strive for perfection in everything you do. Take the best that exists and make it better. When it does not exist, design it. After tinkering with some French-made cars, most notably a two-cylinder Decaville, Royce realized that he was repeatedly fixing the same mechanical issues. This led him to improve upon many of the car's components until, just like before, he became tired of working for others and decided to start building his own automobile. By 1903, Henry had already designed and manufactured his own petrol engine. The following year, he rolled down into town driving his first self-made vehicle, the Royce 10 horsepower motor car. Charles Rolls. Born in 1877, in the wealthy London district of Berkeley Square, Charles Stuart Rolls was the third son of Lord and Lady Langatop. Never short on money, Charles became the first undergraduate to own a motor car and was given the nicknames Dirty Rolls and Petrols because he was always fiddling with engines. Although Rolls and Royce's journeys were different, the two were strikingly similar in terms of their passion and inventiveness. Close to the time, Rolls had started to build his own cars. Rolls set up one of the first car dealerships in Britain with the help of his friend Claude Johnson. Since the industry was just getting started, many motorists gathered within the same social circles. A close friend of Rolls, Harry Edmonds, happened to be a shareholder of a new and exciting British company, 
that had just opened a factory in Manchester while showcasing its first car. The company's name was Royce Limited. And so it was. On the 4th of May, 1904, Charles Rolls and Henry Royce met for the first time at the Midland Hotel in Manchester, England. After taking Royce's twin-cylinder 10-horsepower car for a test drive, Rolls knew instantly that it was the car that he wanted to sell. A deal was agreed on the 23rd of December, 1904, for the salesman to sell as many cars as Royce could produce under the combined name of Rolls-Royce. The initial lineup of Rolls-Royce vehicles not only contained the 10-horsepower model, which was given a price of 395 pounds at launch, equivalent to around 40,000 US dollars today. There was also a 15-horsepower three-cylinder model for 500 pounds, a 20-horsepower four-cylinder car for 650 pounds, and a 30-horsepower six-cylinder model priced at 890 pounds, roughly $90,000 nowadays. To manage and promote their brand, Rolls brought in his former business partner, Claude Johnson, and appointed him as managing director. An expert at publicity, Johnson played a vital role in the company's early success. He was so important that he became affectionately known as the hyphen in Rolls-Royce. When the company began to release 40 and 50 horsepower vehicles, Johnson created the bold advertising slogan claiming that the six-cylinder Rolls-Royce was not one of the best, but the best car in the world. With the product able to live up to the hype, it turned out to be a phrase that would forever be associated with Rolls-Royce. As interest in their vehicles grew rapidly, Rolls and Royce realized that they would soon need to find new premises to produce their cars. They considered multiple sites, but it was the offer of cheap electricity by the Council of Derby that resulted in the car company building its new factory there. Designed mostly by Henry Royce himself, it opened just south of the city in 1908. Charles Rolls, and now by association Henry Royce, frequently rubbed shoulders with prominent members of London's Automobile Club of Great Britain. Charles Robinson Sykes, an artist and sculptor, immortalized the spirit of ecstasy with his creation of an iconic ornamental figurine in 1909. Modeled on English actress Eleanor Thornton, it became an exclusive emblem that stands proudly on the hood of every Rolls Royce built since. Leaning into the wind, arms outstretched, with her dress billowing as if in flight, the spirit of ecstasy is a symbol of dreams, of energy, grace, and beauty that embodies the heights pursued by a unique and progressive group of friends. It remains a tribute to their vision and everything their timeless legacy stands for. The now famous silhouette has been sculpted in gold, silver, diamond, carbon fiber, and many other materials. On the 12th of July, 1910, tragedy struck when the tail of a Wright Flyer aircraft flown by Charles Rolls broke off during a flying display. Rolls became the first ever British citizen to die from an accident involving a powered aircraft. The following year, now without his partner, Royce began to suffer from ill health. He was forced to move away from Derby in 1912 and had a major operation in London. Doctors gave him only months to live. But Royce, ever the workaholic, defied the medical professionals, and soon he was back inspecting new designs for Rolls-Royce Limited, albeit if only by drawings brought to him by employees, rather than inspecting the vehicles in person. When World War I broke out in 1914, Rolls-Royce began manufacturing airplane engines at the request of the British government. Production of the Rolls-Royce Eagle began in 1915 and was a great success proving to be one of only two engines made by the Allies that was not deemed to be a technical failure. The chassis of Rolls-Royce's 4050 models were used as a blueprint for the first British armored cars used in both World War I and World War II. After the war, Rolls-Royce opened a factory in the United States in Springfield, Massachusetts to help clear a three-year backlog for demand for its cars. The 4050 model had become known as Silver Ghost thanks to another advertising campaign by Claude Johnson. When sales of Ghost began to decline post-war, the company introduced a 20 model in 1922 that was much more affordable. The Rolls-Royce Phantom ended up replacing the Silver Ghost in 1925 
and the Phantom III was the last large model produced before the outbreak of the Second World War. In 1931, Rolls-Royce acquired Bentley and halted production of Bentley's 8-liter vehicle, which at the time had been a rival to the Phantom. Rolls-Royce did release a 3.5-liter Bentley two years later, winning over Bentley diehards by racking up the fastest average speeds in the RAC Tourist Trophy in the ARDS racing circuit. In 1933, after falling ill once more, Henry Royce passed away at his home in West Whittier. The British government built a shadow factory for Rolls-Royce in the town of Crewe in 1938 so they could build Merlin and Griffin Aero engines. These would prove essential for pilots during World War II, and a variant of the Merlin engine, dubbed the Meteor, was developed for the Cromwell tank. Alongside the prestige gained from its automobiles, the company has continued to be a big player in the aerospace industry. Present-day cars like the Rolls-Royce Phantom, Ghost, Wraith, Dawn, and Cullinan continue to amaze and push the boundaries of what a luxury vehicle can be. Carrying the torch that was ignited by a brilliant partnership struck almost 120 years ago, the company states that inspiring greatness exists at the very core of Rolls-Royce motor cars. It is the guiding force from which our innovation, aspiration, and ongoing legacy unfold. As we continue to extend the limits of possibility, inspiring greatness will forever remain our ultimate pursuit. Is there a more inspiring partnership than that of Charles Rolls and Henry Royce? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this video entertaining or learned something new, please leave a like and tell us what you'd like to see next. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on our next inspiring video. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you again soon.